And today we're doing a insulator change out of uh, some polymers that have been in place for a little over 25 years. Um, and we're proactively changing them out due to some things we found at another structure on the line uh, where we had some failure of the fiberglass rod inside the insulator. We've had over 550 insulators that we've re replaced on this project and that's with the use of five helicopter crews, four from Haverfield, one from Air 2, as well as one ground-based crew. Just given the very tight outage window we have to perform the work, you know, we've really been relying pretty heavily on the help of Air 2 and Haverfield to perform the work. Just given the lack of accessibility, the extremely poor right-of-way for a lot of the structures that we've needed these dead-end structure insulator replacements on. Polymer insulators are much lighter and when this line was originally designed it was um, it covers a lot of areas that are very difficult to get to so a lot of it was constructed with helicopters where we could bring in the structures by air so very light construction and the polymers are much lighter than like glass or porcelain insulators so they're much easier for the crews to work with and get in and now the structures that were designed that way we can't go back with glass because they're not designed to support the heavier uh, glass insulators or porcelain. We've taken a representative statistical sample of them and we're going to ship those back to um, Electric Power Research, EPRI, their lab um, out east and they will cut the insulators apart and look for any uh, corrosion or damage on the fiberglass rods in the insulator and give us a um, indication of how much more damage is on the line so we get a good sample of understanding what polymers do as they age.